Dear students, I am Rubichu and we are going to do an experiment today to determine the boiling point of a liquid. So let us see what will happen if heat energy is supplied to these molecules. Ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, the kinetic energy will increase and they will start moving away from each other. Okay, anything else? Ma'am, there will be a change in temperature and the state of matter will change. So this is the aim of today's experiment, to note the change in the temperature when a liquid changes to its gaseous state. Yes. Ma'am, is this temperature constant? Yes, this temperature is constant. And this is uh, when a liquid is heated, molecules gain energy. And when it will change to vapors, the vapor pressure will become constant to the atmospheric pressure and the temperature will become constant. Ma'am, Ma is there a name for this constant temperature? Yes, it is called the boiling point of the substance. I just wanted to know whether all the liquids boil at a constant temperature. Yes, all pure liquids boil at a constant temperature and that is called the boiling point and it is its characteristic property also. Excuse me ma'am, ma'am is the boiling point of all the substances same? No, boiling point of all the substances is not same. Like water boils at a temperature of 100 degrees, acetone at 56 degrees and benzene at 80 degrees. Why do we take the sample of water only for our experiment? Uh, one reason is because it is easily available. Second is because it has high boiling point as compared to other liquids. So it is less volatile. Shall we record this temperature? Yes, we'll record this temperature. When the boiling starts and the temperature become constant, we'll start noting down the temperature. So let us see with the um, apparatus what all things are required for this experiment. Now. This is called a tripod stand. This is a thermometer which we'll use to record the observations. This is a flask in which we'll take a sample of water. This is a wire gauge. This is a burner. And this is the iron stand. So we'll fix up the apparatus and then we'll start taking the observations. to wire gauge here. Now let us see pre 
few precautions of this experiment. So let us see there are okay. so certain precautions are there which are to be followed. One is the thermometer should not touch the walls of the glass flask. Second is we have to use a wire gauge and me. just wait for a minute and then fans should be put off. So we cannot, we should not heat it directly on the flame like this. We have to use a wire gauge for this. Ma'am, I just wanted to know uh, why do we use a wire gauge or what is the use of it? Can't we just manage it without it? Without the wire gauge? Yes, ma'am. No, we are using the wire gauge so that the heating is uniform. Otherwise, if the flame will be at one point, then the flask may break from that point. Yes, any other? Ma'am, can we use uh, flat, uh, round flat bottom glass also? Yes, we can use a flat bottom flask also. We can use a hard glass test tube also. But we preferably use this round bottom flask because it has more surface area for better heating. We, ca we can use a round bottom, uh, we can use a flat bottom flask also and we can use a hard glass test tube also. Yes. Ma'am, why shouldn't the thermometer touch the sides of the flask? Then it might note down the temperature or record the temperature of the, of the glass also. And that will affect your reading. So we'll record the observations. Let us see what is the temperature at which the boiling started. Note down. Come and see. It is 75 degrees. So it is almost 75 degrees. Now we will note down the final temperature of the water. So the boiling point. Of water is. Now when the temperature will become constant. We will note down that temperature. Come and see what is the temperature. 100 degrees. So this is 100 degrees. So this 100 degrees is the boiling point of the water. So this is the temperature when the liquid changes to its gaseous state. And that was the aim of the experiment. Now we will do another part of this experiment that is to measure the temperature of hot water as it cools and then we'll plot a temperature versus time graph. So we'll use the same apparatus and we'll see when the level of the, the thermometer, when we'll see the reading will fall down to 80 degrees, we'll start taking readings and we'll record the observations till it falls down to 40 degrees and then we'll plot a graph for temperature versus time. So we'll see when a liquid cools, it loses heat to the surroundings. So the rate of the cooling is directly proportional to the fall in the temperature. So we'll see that uh, the cooling, you have to note down the observations very fast because in the beginning, the rate in the fall of the temperature will be fast. So we'll record the readings after every one minute and then after two minutes or one and a half minutes. So we can increase the time later on. But for first five, six readings, you have to take the readings very fast. Ma'am? Yes? Ma'am, why very fast in the beginning? because the difference in the temperature of water and that of the surroundings is more. So the fall in the temperature will be fast. When there is a little difference between the temperature of the water and the temperature of the surroundings, then the fall in the temperature will be, will be less. So after taking the observations, we will plot a graph between temperature and time. Time will take in minutes on the x-axis. And on the y-axis, we'll take the temperature in degree Celsius. So we have seen that we have recorded the temperature when it falls down from 80 degrees to almost 40 degrees. So this curve of the graph, this represents the cooling curve, the rate in the fall of the temperature. And this is the temperature time graph. So this graph you have to plot. So you'll have to take the observations after regular intervals of time. And then we have to plot a graph between this. So this is um, to measure the temperature of hot water as it cools and then to plot a temperature time graph. This is your second experiment.
So we can do it with the same because we have already set up the apparatus. So after the wa water has been boiled to 100 degrees, we'll allow it to cool and when the temperature will fall down, we'll record the observations. Then we, you have to take about 10, 10 observations so that we can plot a graph. So this is the graph and this is the second experiment.